What's up, guys? It's your girl T, and I'm here today with Aaron Koblin, the founder of Within. Yeah, so Within is an immersive storytelling company. I'm co-founded with a guy named Chris Milk and myself. Basically, it's an app that you can open up and drop into immersive stories on your phone, an Oculus Rift or a HTC Vive, and get lost in these stories. Today, Aaron and I are gonna go through various movies over the years that have portrayed VR and VR storytelling and see what the movies got right and what they definitely didn't get right. And we're also gonna talk a little bit about where VR is going in the future. The Matrix, that was a huge movie in terms of VR and sort of alternate realities. And in The Matrix, we see Neo literally plug in. Is it possible within virtual reality to actually learn things as quickly as these characters do in the movies? I know Kung Fu. You will learn things and you will learn them quickly. I, it's not gonna be like a neural dump where you just get skills and it's magic. There's a thing called neuroplasticity where we're actually rewiring the way that our brains are working based off different types of stimulus that come in. So there are things that you can quite remarkably and quickly change about yourself. So I don't think you're gonna necessarily become a ninja overnight, but this ability to experience things that are so different from being just a normal human, it's totally real. How about superpowers? You know, with Neo sort of bending the matrix and things like that, how realistic is that from a programming standpoint? I mean, you can already see things in virtual reality today that, are, that allow you to do things like that. Like you can fly, that's a, no problem. Things that are more interesting, I think, are like bending time. You can actually control the playback of physics and other things. Um, I think you see that in the film. That's totally real and, and can be done today. So evidently, we can basically be superheroes in VR. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. This isn't real. What is real? Is it possible to have graphics and images so real that it's kind of impossible to discern between reality and virtual reality? And there's different ways to create virtual reality. There are things like photogrammetry where you're scanning real life scenes and then you're piecing them back together. That ends up looking quite real. I think in the future we're gonna see both uh, kind of mixed reality where you actually have just your normal environment augmented with things that look incredibly real and maybe confusing. Um, and that's gonna to lead to some pretty interesting scenarios and questions. I think in the not so distant future, you may actually question whether you saw something that was real or not. Wow. Black Mirror delves a whole lot into VR and the possibilities of a often dystopian future. In the playtest episode, their devices are actually pretty small, they're pretty minimal. There's also augmented reality in that particular episode. How much does the augmented reality in that episode relate to how it is today? So what you're starting to see with augmented reality is pretty similar to what you see there. They show actually a low polygon character sprout out of a table. Um, that's really similar to some of the experiments you see and some of the things we've done. In the episode, we also see that it's basically like horror mixed with virtual reality. It's very immersive, very scary. Is that something that we're actually seeing in VR options that are available today? Yeah, I mean, there are a bunch of people who are playing around with various forms of creating intrigue and even horror in virtual reality and augmented reality. You don't want anything that's too scary. Well, you are kind of handing your consciousness over, which yeah. is a, a pretty, you, you want to have trust with whoever you're giving it to. Also, there's the realism aspect of this episode where he can grab onto people and actually feel like they're there. Yeah, there are a bunch of interfaces that are coming out. So there are obviously your controller kinds of interactions, but there's also gloves and even hand tracking. It's a company called Leap Motion, which analyzes the way that your hands are moving. Let's move along to the San Junipero episode where we see elderly people able to relive their youth or their younger days through virtual reality. Is it or will it be possible to build a world like this? I think we're, we're starting to have different techniques for capturing our reality. Um, I actually know a couple who filmed their wedding in 360 degree video. So to that extent, they will be able to go back and at least from that vantage point, kind of relive what, what it was like to be there. Um, there's other technologies like photogrammetry which will allow us to scan scenes and also eventually scan people. Um, there's also a company called Lytro which does light field capture and that's the ability to actually capture full light field areas and then move around in that space as though you're actually there. So we may not be as far off as we think from being able to actually capture reality in a way that we could be present in again. Since we are dealing with the elderly in this episode and a lot of people who are quite ill, are there any applications for VR in healthcare today? Virtual reality can be really valuable to people who have limited mobility and accessibility. Um, we've done some projects with hospitals where we actually are able to take kids who are stuck in the hospital rooms and put them somewhere else for a while. And that really has a proven effect on, um, on the mind and on the presence, which can be, you know, suggestion is that it can actually help real healing. Oh. Therapeutic VR, who knew? Well, I mean, I guess you did, but I certainly didn't. The Lawnmower Man. Now, this is something that a lot of you youngsters might not have seen, but in it, 
a man becomes more and more powerful, basically all powerful, after spending a ton of time in virtual reality. Lawnmower Man gets truly immersive with its VR. There, there are two different interfaces. One of them, they're just like sitting in a chair, leaning back, flying through. And that actually probably would make you sick because your vestibular system is expecting you to feel that motion. And if you don't, then the primal you is saying, oh, I must have eaten poison berries, I gotta puke. There's another interface though where they have them moving around and, and going like this when they're flying. And that actually would probably work pretty well because your body feels that motion as you're flying and it accepts it as real. So, um, How interesting, kind of you need to add the motion to prevent the motion sickness. Come on, let me in. Access granted. So there have been many movies over the years that have talked about VR and tried to portray it, but I wanted to know from you as an actual guy in the VR world, what is your favorite VR movie? The first one that comes to mind as like a great portrayal is Her, where you have this augmented reality scene and the guy's sitting there and this wonderfully sarcastic, rude character is just talking smack. And um, you can just see how that type of environment could really suck you in and you, you could build a relationship with a, a creature or another person in that context. That is gonna do it for us today. Thank you so much for joining us, but tell us where people can keep up with you or even with Within. Yeah, check out Within online at with.in. Um, I'm at Aaron Koblen. Thanks a lot for having me. There you go. Make sure you guys subscribe and follow us on all of our social media as well so that you don't miss our next episode. And we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.